Gagauzia, the home of the Gagauz people, an autonomous region in Eastern Europe. It is a land of fertile soil, clean air, and colorful churches. The Gagauz people who live in this autonomous region in southern Moldova are rooted deeply in their unique ethnic culture. Of particular interest is that almost all of its people are Orthodox Christians. And they are a Turkic people group. We may have previously heard and seen a lot about the Gagauz Turks and their homeland, the Gagauz Autonomous Region. Put simply, they live as a Turkic community in an autonomous state within the Republic of Moldova. How would you like to become reacquainted with the Gagauz? Consider the history and values of the Beshalma Museum or the life of Dmitri Karachovan. Its football team, Oguz Sport, whose players cross themselves while taking the field and whose jerseys display the symbol of a wolf. Observe the writing on one of its church walls, which, in its own unique ethnic syntax, declares, God is love. Become reacquainted with the Gagos through its beautiful, historic church structures, including the monastery for women in the city of Kongas. Our journey, during which we will follow many stories, begins in the town of Komrat, the capital of Gagauzia, and the Ai Yoan Church located in its center. An Orthodox Church in Restoration. The Sunday Service. Let our adventure begin, where the symbol of the wolf, meaning beast in Gagosian, meets the cross. In the fertile lands of the Gagauz, not only its crops, but its churches, with their vibrant congregations, have come to symbolize local communities. Churches, of course, are not limited to the capital. The Gagauz Orthodox priest of the church in Yalpu, Father Sergei,
The Gagauzes come from a Turkish origin, just like the Pechenegs and the Orzes. They moved from Altai to the Balkans. 200 years ago, they migrated from the Balkans to this place called Bucak and formed the Gagauz people, which we call ethnogenesis. We call this place Gagauz Eri, the place where the Gagauzes live as a Turkish people. Our grandfathers came here 200 years ago, during the Ottoman period. The Crimean Khanate was here. Thus, we know from yesterday to today that the people of Gagazia were established in the Balkans. Since the Gagos people did not research their own history, many invented various theories about them. The Bulgarians called the Gagos Turkified Bulgarians. The Romanians, on the other hand, called them Turkified Romanians, and so on and so forth. As Russian scientist A, we see clearly in the 1901 document written by A. Manov Moskov that the Gagos people are Oz. We also see in a Bulgarian document 50 years before that, it is stated that within the word origin of the Gagos people exists the word Oz. We continue to research older times in our history. Science and research also supports our migration from Altai in this direction. In the 11th century, we moved there to the Balkans and made a home here. Chisinau, the capital of Moldova. The Moldovan Academy of Sciences and the Institute of Cultural Heritage, led by Kirinkova Elizaveta, researcher and author of many important works on the Gagos people. There are many theories, a total of more than 20, about the origin of the Gagauzes. The main theories are probably limited to three. The first theory says that the Gagauz people descend from a Turkic origin. The second theory tries to prove that the Gagauz people are Bulgarians, as some scientists believe. The third theory is that the Gagauz people are Turkish. I would like to say that each theory contains positive details that can be studied, and yet there are, quite rightly, points that are questionable. Therefore, most of the Gagauz researchers believe that the Gagauz people are of Turkic origin. What I would like to say about the complexity of the work is that studying the Gagauzes is very difficult because the first sources about the Gagauz people consist of archive documents dating back to the 19th century. There is no documentation prior to then. The lands of the Gagos, with their crops, their monuments, and with commemorative roadside structures erected in remembrance of those who passed away in traffic accidents.
Valery Yanioğlu and Peter Zlatov, two local bureaucrats, discuss the faith and culture of the Gagauz people. Our family gave us a language. God gave us our faith. And that faith is Christian Orthodox. And we are Turks. According to official documents, we have been of the Christian faith for 800 years. Since the beginning, the Gagauzes have been Christian Orthodox. We are Turks. We are Gökoz Turks. We are a people among the Turkish family. But our faith is Orthodox Christianity. This is the belief of our people, and they go to churches. This faith was left to us by our ancestors. This faith makes us Gagauzes. Together with our language, these two make the Gogos people Gogoses. We are a Christian people who speak Turkish. Every village in Gagosia has a church. They continue their activities and thus keep the people together. In the story of the founding of Father Sergei's church, we see how God's message is inseparable from moral teaching. While churches all over are becoming places of entertainment, he did just the opposite, transforming a former nightclub into the house of God. We established a new church in this place. The date of its foundation is August 19. On this day, we commemorate the change of Jesus' appearance. The fact that Jesus took three of his disciples and led them up a high mountain, where his appearance was changed. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light, forms the basis of our celebration. We celebrate that day on August 19. This day also coincides with the establishment of the Gaugas Republic in 1990 by the Gaugas people. Because of the importance of these two days, it was decided to establish a new church here. We made our prayers for a year in a big iron container. This place we bought was a bar, but we turned it into a place of worship and we held all our activities there for a year before the construction of this building. The Gagauz language, which is close to the Turkish spoken in Turkey, has developed to include both the Cyrillic and Latin alphabets in both literature and everyday language. It is not difficult to listen, understand, feel, and even join in a singing of a Gagauz hymn in a church in Gagauzia. Inside the Kirsova Protestant Church, one hears the echoes of both Gagauz and Russian worship. Vasilitsa knows by memory all of the Psalms of David found in the Old Testament. Vasilitsa Stoyanova, 87 years old, reads from Psalms 31 and 137. Like many other parts of Gagauzia, Kirsova is a village where not only Gagauzes, but also Bulgarians live together in the same community. The local church pastor, Petar Terzi, tells the story of his church. Both Bulgarians and Gagozes 
live together in this village. That is why we also have Russian worship sometimes. We share Christian gospel with our Gagao's brothers in Russian or in Gagao's. All of the Gagao's are Christians and there are also those who distinguish their beliefs with different principles and cultures. Some of them gather here at this place. Children playing football in Valkanisht, an industrial city in the south of Gagauzia. Born in Kongaz, yet another city where Gagos and Bulgarians live together, the poet of Kongaz and the author of the Gagos National Anthem, Todor Zanet, shares the Lord's Prayer in the Gagos language. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by the name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gagauzian is a language that has been directly influenced not only by cultural exchange, but also indirectly by the conflicts fought throughout history in its geography. And yet, the language has managed to survive. The Gagaos language is a very beautiful language. We are also trying to protect our mother tongue. During Soviet times, between the years 1944 and 1990, we always spoke Russian. We finished school in the Russian language. We finished university in the Russian language. However, we kept our mother tongue in the family. It is difficult to establish a state. Why? Because you must inspire people, wake people up. Consider that we had neither newspaper nor television during those years. At universities and colleges, our scientists work to study our native language. We produce books, dictionaries, and various other works, publishing them through our science center. Thus, we continue to learn and develop our Turkish language as people among the Turkic family. I have never considered the Gaugas language as a separate language. The Gaugas language is a Turkish language. Even today, our elderly people who live in the village will say, don't you understand Turkish? But I want you to understand one thing. Here, thanks to the Soviet educational system and the propaganda it imposed at the time, when the word Turk is mentioned, Turkish and Turkey is understood specifically. However, when we say Turk, we mean the whole of the Turkish world. The Tatars are Turkic, the Uzbeks are Turkic, the Turkmens are Turkic, the Kyrgyz from the Kipchak Turks are Turkic, and the Cossacks are also Turkic. This is our understanding. The Gagauz people do not confuse themselves with other Turkic peoples. We can give examples of the people of Karaman who live in the Balkan Peninsula in the past. The Gagauz people use their books for a long time. But neither the people of Karaman call themselves Gagauz, nor the Gagauz people call themselves Karamans. Beshalma, 
located just north of Lake Congas. This town continues to shed light on the history and the culture of the Gagauz, especially through its museum and its beloved poet, Dimitri Karachovan. Ludmila Marin, director of the Beshalma Museum and the daughter of Dimitri Karachovan, greets the film crew with a traditional Gagauz reception of bread, wine, and salt. As Ms. Ludmila introduces the museum, one gets to know both the Gagauz people and Dmitry Karachovan, a prominent Gagauz. The museum was founded 52 years ago. It was founded by someone who loves Beshalma with all his mind and heart and who devoted his life to Beshalma. Dmitry Karachoban, his life was short. He died at the age of 53, but left much of his legacy behind. He left a rich legacy with more than 50 oil paintings and more than 60 sculptures. He was the first to be interested in film art among the Gorgos people and made more than 40 short films, both fictional and documentary style. He put his heart to whatever work he was doing. He was never sloppy. We can say that this museum was the greatest of his works. In 1998, we opened an exhibition hall in this museum founded by Dmitry Karachoban. I am sure that he would have wished for all the people of the world to retreat to museums and consider their own heritage. As Mina Kose, author of the contemporary words sung in the Gagos National Anthem once wrote, How beautiful you are, Korafum, my people. As we say goodbye to the distinguished museum of these beautiful Gagos people, we hear the words of a traditional Gagos folk song resound in the background. <laughs> We are back once again at the Ayuan Church, which shines brightly behind its flowing fountain and the setting sun in the capital, Komrat.
the chapel that Zenaider built for her sick grandson Yuri. Ivan's nephew Yuri is now healthy and practicing medicine in Australia. Zenaider and her son Ivan talk about the Gagauz people. We talked with our children, and when our grandchild came, we built a chapel so that there would be a place of worship built by our family. At first, we could not get permission for the opening of this place, which we built in memory of the little ones in our family. The idea to open this chapel came to our family in the year 2000. We were visitors in this life. If we do nothing, there won't be anything left behind. Let every person, every Christian, leave a mark on this earth we build this place for this purpose, and we want everyone to come and pray here. The prayers will also be for our good and for the good of all Christians. People do things for wealth and money. After you're gone, factories remain, wealth remains, the wealthy die as well as the poor. This is why. We must do God's work while we are still living on this earth. I want all the young people, all the Gugul's youth, to turn to God. We can only go forward as long as we believe in God. The non-believers will stay behind. This is why we need to turn to God. He will help us, all of us. The Tent Gagu's Children Studying the Bible at the Baptist Church in Chadurlunga. Among the Gagauz youth, a man we are sure that Zanaider is proud of, Ivan Patraman. He is a cinema artist and film director. I filmed the first Gagauz movie. It takes place in the 1920s and 1930s. It's titled Dünürcülük. I have been in this business for 10 years. I learned cinema in Russia, in St. Petersburg. I worked with a lot of actors and directors there. After staying in Russia for seven years, I returned to Gaugazia. I wanted to make a good movie for the Gaugaz people in the Gaugaz language. Because our language is very beautiful. The movie Dünürcülük tells about the customs of the Gaugos and the forced marriage ceremonies that took place at the time. It's a drama project showing the love, the passion and the family customs of the Gaugos. The homes of George and Olga, the elderly members of the Saabi family living in the village of Kirsova. The couple tells us firsthand how they spend their days. I was born here in Kirsova. Uh, I am Bulgarian. My husband is Google. I was born here in Kosovo in 1950. I was a chauffeur for 30 years. The day goes by with daily errands, new work, 
We may be feeding the animals in the morning or washing the dishes. There is also work to be done in the evenings. We have gotten old, but we are never tired. We work non-stop. We work non-stop. Comrade Stadium, which was demolished and recently renovated. On the field, young footballers are getting ready for the game. Their team's name, Gagauz Oguz Sport. My name is Anatoly Mavrodi. I am the president of the club, a football school in Komrad, Gagauzia. For kids, we were founded in 2014 in Komrad. Our desire is to teach children sports and football and to develop football in Gaugazia. This is our logo, our crest, our logo. The Ogus are our roots. They are the roots of both the Gaugas and the Turkish people. For this reason, we are called Ogusport. There was a Han Turkish World Congress in Hungary. Someone approached me there and asked me, Are you Gaugas? And I said, I am. He replied, You are our ancestors. You are the Gökols. You are first. We all came from you. I was thrilled. The Gaugas people have started acknowledging that they are descended from the Oguz in recent years. But the official signs that serve the Soviet regime still creates fictional stories. In the notes of the priests, we see the Gagauls in the Balkans before they came to Bessarabia. Of special interest is the orthodox faith of the Gagauls, which is reflected in these writings and notes. To tell the truth, because life itself is not static, we need to establish that the Gagauls' people have been in constant motion, being affected over time by religious, spiritual and traditional life, as well as political movements. During some periods, even the orthodox Christian Gagauls had trouble practicing their religion and traditions freely. We know they had to hide their icons in chests. On the other hand, Bulgarian academic Arnoldov writes on this subject. During the Ottoman period, the Gagauls people could freely perform their religious ceremonies and traditions like other Orthodox population in the Balkan Peninsula. Moreover, the Turks joined them on these religious holidays. They even gave them some gifts, and it was not prohibited to celebrate such holidays. Because these religious holidays were not directly related to visiting the church, but for the Gugus, these religious holidays represented and symbolized their orthodoxness, they continued these celebrations. The churches that we call canonical do not recognize many of their holidays, because they do not follow the rules of the canonical orthodox church. But to the Gugus, these definitely are orthodox traditions for them. This is exactly what they believe. They continue to practice these traditions and rituals in the lands of Bessarabia, where there are no Turks, even today. We have a dream to be a great team in Gaugazia and Moldova. We want our youth to grow up and become members of a big team so that we can play in Moldova in the Super League. Valery Yaniolu talks about the history and legend of the wolf figure called the Beast. The Beast is our legend. I can say comfortably that the Beast lives inside each of us. 
That is what the Gaugas say. The Gaugas never remained in the same place for long. They were nomads and wandered around with tree stumps in their hands. While wandering, they got stuck in a swamp. It was difficult to get out of the swamp and they were about to die. Later, they noticed that a lame wolf has also become stuck in the swamp. When the people saw it, they thought, if it was able to get in, there must be a way to get out. So they asked the wolf to show them the way. The wolf gets them out of the swamp, and so the Gaugas survive to this day. This is why we respect the beast. The history of the Gagos people is full of celebrated artists and great people. Poet Mina Kurse, painter Dimitri Sabastin, educator and author Nikolai Babolo, historian and writer Atonos Manov, and poet Dionis Tanasolo, to name just a few. One of these great people is Josef Gargalik, who is buried in Chisinau. On his grave is written, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. From the book of Matthew. Standing next to his grave is Todor Zanet. Who tells about Yosef Gargilik? Yosef Gargilik. Yosef Gargilik. There were no Bibles during the Soviet era. They couldn't be found. And so they sent this man over to us, to Congas, to be priest. We met him. Father Yosef, Father Yosef. He used to lift over there. Today in Moldova, there's a monastery called Capriana. It is one of the biggest monasteries in Moldova. They made him high priest of the monastery. They put a Gaugos there during the Soviet regime. Komrat, which was elected capital during a 1995 referendum, is one of three regions in Gagosia. Komrat is followed by the Chadurlunga and Balkanesht regions. Within these regions are many villages such as Bujak, Dizginje, Beshgöz, Tomai, Chumai, Kongas, Beshalma, and Kirsova. The Chadur region. The city of Chadurlunga. Its center hosts the Mihail Chakur Gagauz National Theater. Gagauz's female monastery is also found here in this city. The Demetrius Monastery takes its name from the patron saint of the city, Saint Demetrius. Standing out as the largest and most famous monastery in Gagauzia, with 20 nuns, this place is also known as the Sister Elizabeth Monastery today. Before we listen to Gagau's hymns in the local Baptist church, let's observe daily life in the market area as we learn a bit more about Gagau's culture. The Gagauz people celebrate the holidays of both Orthodox Christian and national cultural traditions. The Gagauz, who have their own wide range of folklore, do not confuse national holidays with religious festivals, but commemorate national holidays as primarily cultural celebrations. In Gagauz culture, funerals are performed by the carrying of the body in an open casket to the cemetery followed by the family of the deceased. On the body of the casket, they place flowers with a cross on the chest area. The bodies of those who were not baptized and those who did not have a church marriage ceremony, known as istevnos, are not taken to the church before burial. 
The bodies which are taken to the church are always taken out in the afternoon, and the relatives of the deceased wear a cloth called a peshkir around their necks at the funeral. The Turkish hymns, sermons, and prayers heard in a Gagos Baptist church are very easily understandable for anyone speaking the Turkish spoken in Turkey. Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. Amen. Today you have sent us our young brothers. We worship with them. Thank you so much, Lord. Praise be to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Aspects of Gago's culture are interwoven everywhere, from their daily lives to their music and dances, to their literature, to their weddings and baptism ceremonies. One of the leading figures of the Gagoos people, a man whose values and influence left a mark in every area of Gagoos history, culture and faith, Mikhail Chakr. <sighs> Mikhail Chakir, Mikhail Chakir, Mikhail Chakir. Apostle Mikhail Chakir. The Apostle Mikhail Chakir was born in this town, in the town of Chadurlunga. His family came here from the Balkans in 1806 and established a village in Moldova. Its name is Chadr. It's a small village. It has very little land. One of the members of the Chukur family has finally come to where we are now and built a church here made out of wood. They used to live here. This was all kept somewhat hidden from the Soviet administration because it was an atheist regime. They did not approve of priests. But we, on the other hand, began to work to find the grave of Mikhail Chakir. Many things came to an end with his death. The Soviet Union was established, communism came, faith was forbidden, churches closed, but now with the help of God, we continue to keep his dreams alive. He did incredible work in the area of religion to ensure that people connected to one another through their beliefs. We call this person an apostle. We organize conferences every year in his name. Mikhail Chakir is our illuminator. He is the first person to translate the Bible into the Gauga's language, a hundred years ago. He also has prayer books in Gauga's. Even at a time when the Gauga's lands were included in Russian Empire frontiers. Mikhail Chakir is our enlightened leader. We call him Apostle. 
He is a man of many sciences and languages, a priest. He talks about it all in his books. The history of the Bessarabian Gogos. He translated the Gospels into Gogos and had it printed in 1910. He translated prayers and had them printed too. He is also the first to form the Moldovian Russian dictionary. He now looks over all the Tatar and Gogo schools in all of Moldova. He has authored more than 30 books, articles and works of art, all for the purpose of introducing the Gogos to the world. A big family. He brought science to our people. And in those days, he wanted people to be educated. So, that's that. God gave us Mihail Chakir. He's not alive today. A Moldovan author once said, Mihail Chakir was not only an apostle, to the Gaugas people, but also to the Moldovan people. Today, we have theatres and colleges named after Mihail Chakir. In every school, there is a Mihail Chakir corner. Mihail Chakir is our everything, he is our history. The Gaugas culture, the Gaugas language, the Gaugas faith. The first person to collect the history of the Gogos people was Mihail Chakir. He was the first to create the first dictionaries. The first one to translate a book into Gogos. It was all done by Mihail Chakir. The goal, the dream that Father Sergei is working so hard to realize. We have constructed a building here. We will build a great church in the future. We plan to build a great cathedral. That cathedral will be the center of the Gaugas church. We have a philosophy, an understanding we received during the European football training. We don't ask our players to score goals. We play our own style with this understanding. As long as our young people have good ball control, as long as they play a team game, as long as they play like Barcelona and Arsenal, as long as they play with style, we are trying to in instill this philosophy and understanding in our young people. I am one of the Gogos people. The Gogos people were Christians. They still are Christians. They protected their language and faith they held on to God in every difficulty. Wars have tried to break the Gagors and impose the idea that God doesn't exist. But our families helped us and pass on to us our faith. We are trying to convey this faith to those who come after us. To our children, so that you know that God was, is, and is to come. We won't always be there, but God will be. God has never forgotten us. He never let us fall, and He never let us go. He never allowed us to lose. They will follow God's path and grow in His path. Let me tell you this, protect yourselves, protect your neighbours, protect one another. We cannot otherwise draw close to God. 
The work of Gagot's painter Mete Savachan, entitled To Rest, located in Valery Yaniolu's office. His interpretation sheds light on its meaning. The Gagos are right now resting, says Mr. Valeri. He adds, whenever this resting ends, the Gagos will run faster than ever toward their goals. Indeed, the Gagos people, in spite of all the wars, oppression, cultural isolation, and suffering they have experienced in their history, are a people who have overcome all their troubles with the help of God. In the words of poet Mina Kurse, who once wrote, God protect the land, this Gagos land, this country. The Gagos will continue to overcome. It is a fertile land blessed by God, a land of harsh climate filled with warm people. It has a short written history, but an extensive lengthy future. <laughs>